Hey there, guys, welcome to the live show today. We're going to be talking about how to stay relevant in 2020 with what's going on now. We're talking about how to remain relevant in business. That's what we're talking about today. As you guys are tuning in, let me know where are you tuning in from and just a nice g'day into the comments. If you're watching the replay as well, uh, just let us know that you're watching the replay. We're going to be talking around how to stay relevant in business. That's what we're going to be talking about today because we speak with business owners all around Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, America, um, throughout Europe now as well. And relevancy is everything when it comes to business. Hey, Indra, hope you're well, man. You're up super early, bro. <laughs> um, so we're talking about how to stay relevant today, how to stay relevant in business. That's what we're talking about today. I'm going to give you four main ways to be able to stay relevant uh, in business today. That's what I'm going to be talking about today specifically. As you guys are tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from so we can see where we're reaching. And, you know, I don't bite, so say good day. It'd be great to say hello. So we're talking how to stay relevant today. That's what we're talking about specifically and how your business can stay relevant through any time as well. And no matter what's going on in the world, even if, you know, there it is challenging times at the moment like it is. How to stay relevant and how you can actually start uh, really continuing to keep your business relevant throughout any time, any situation with anything that's going on in the world. So... That's what we're going to be talking about today, guys. And this is a really, really important thing that I wanted to speak to you guys about today because for a lot of businesses at the moment, there's a couple of different mindsets a lot of businesses are going through right now. Some people are looking at it as a time of extreme opportunity, right? There's some people that are talking about it. Then there's some people that are actually doing it, right? There's always two different types of people. There's the talkers and there's the doers. Or I like to call it the gunners, the people that are gonna do something. And then there's the doers, the people that do things. So the, the people at the moment that are you know talking about all of this opportunity, there's the people that are talking about the opportunity at the moment, and there's the people that are actually taking action on the opportunity that is available right now. Because it doesn't matter what industry, it doesn't matter what you do, what your service is, etc. There is opportunities in unique ways. And it's your... Your must, you should make it your must to be able to go, okay, I'm going to do something about this. I'm not just going to sit around and hope for the best, right? So remaining relevant is, is partially and, and very heavily around your mindset and your ability to be able to uh, discover opportunity. And we spoke about yesterday on our live around you know, problem solving and all these aspects as well, which were really, really important. However, you must know how to uh, discover where the opportunity is and you must be not just a gunner, you want to be somebody who actually does things. I am gonna do this today. I am gonna make more calls. I am gonna grow my business. I am gonna look for opportunity or you just go and do it. There's two types of people, the gunners and the doers. And there's a lot of people talking about the opportunity that is presented at the moment through tough times, like we're seeing right now for many different people. There's a lot of people talking about it, there's a lot of people doing it. And it's up to you and making your decision as to which bucket you're going to fall into, uh, whether you're gonna fall into the bucket that's completely wet or the one that's completely dry because you're doing nothing. So uh, this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about the opportunity that is presented right now, how to stay relevant within it as well because there is, there's a certain element of businesses right now that are absolutely thriving and, and really finding it challenging to keep up with the amount of workload there. I know we're one of them at the moment because uh, there is a lot of it going on at the moment. Looking at my whiteboard, it's completely full. So well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about remaining relevant in business because yes, there is opportunity right now, regardless of your industry, regardless of what you're doing at the moment. All there is is a pivot. There's something that's got to happen, uh, a change in model, uh, a switch up of service or something. 
uh, and the way that you do things at the moment so that you can start really taking advantage of the opportunity that is there within your industry at the moment. Because if there's one thing that's happened right now in the world is everyone's gone back to a level playing field, right? Level playing field. So some people were shut down, which is unfortunate, which puts everybody else in, everybody in the same bucket and puts everybody into a space of uh, the same level, right? So there's opportunity there. And that's all we're going to be talking about today. We're talking about how to stay relevant. So first of all, what's really, really important when it comes to remaining relevant is you want to really look at the trends. What's going on? You want to understand, you know, today's consumers, the people that buy your products, the way that they think, the way that they do things, or how much money are they spending in the marketplace at the moment. You want to understand the trends. And that's number one. You really want to understand what are the sales trends for your industry. Um, you know, brand loyalty. Are people loyal to specific brands? Or is it that they're willing to go to another brand for another reason, right? So it's like you've got to really understand and got like understand your industry to, to remain relevant. You've got to understand what the sales trends are in your industry. You've got to understand what the uh, challenges are in your industry and everything. You also got to understand, like, are people loyal to certain brands, right? You got to understand, are there, you know, what what's the trend of how long they're loyal to these uh, companies and these other brands and things like that as well. And you want to understand it down to the detail and keep up to date with it. And it's just as simple as, you know, subscribing to, you know, uh, magazines and all these types of things that are in your industry. And, you know, uh, reading blogs and so on like that, just keeping in touch with the marketplace and what is relevant to the marketplace. Because there's trends right now going on in the world, massive trends uh, that people are talking about, th things that people are doing, things that people are taking action on right now that can really start giving you the edge in business. And trends are a massive area right now. Like for example, everybody is going online. That is a trend right now as a result of what has gone on in the marketplace, what has gone on in the business world, right? Everybody is going online. There has been massive spikes in activity online. There's been massive spikes in purchases online because people aren't going to into physical stores at the moment, right? I was cruising through the city last night and realized that there was it was nowhere near as busy as it was going back in January, right? And going back in December. Why is all this happening? It's happening because of trends. It's happening because of things that are happening in the world. There are certain things happening right now that, you know, your business has got to adapt to to remain relevant. So you got to be reading blogs. You got to be, um, you know, looking at sales trends in your industry. You got to be understanding your industry more in depth. What are people? Where are people spending their money? What are people looking to do? What are people going? What are people's go tos when it comes to uh, your industry to remain relevant? Because I, I say this so often: if you are not relevant in business, you are completely irrelevant. If you are not relevant to somebody, you are irrelevant to everybody, right? You got to be relevant to somebody in a marketplace. Somebody. Relevant to somebody in the marketplace. That body doesn't have to be a human being. It can be something, right? Relevant to somebody, right? Somebody that, you know, has something that you want, that you solve a problem for or are a passion-based type service, right? And you've got a loyal of you got loyal, passionate people that are after that specific product that you do, right? So it's about number one, making sure that you understand your own sales trends. That's also for your business as well. It's not outside the industry, right? You want an industry that's worth like a hundred million at least, right? And that would be your marketplace that you go into to be able to uh, get a very small market share on in depth, right? 
You gotta understand your own sales trends. You gotta understand the sales trends of your industry. That's number one. Number two, start reading more magazines, start reading more blogs. I already touched on this. Uh, being busy is no excuse to stop learning. Uh, if you wanna remain relevant in an industry, you must, must, must be able to understand all of this, right? You must be able to understand the fact that, you know, uh, what's going on in your industry, what's going on uh, within subcategories of your industry. Uh, reading magazines, reading blogs, consistently learning, buying online courses, things like that. We just spent a heap more money last night on online courses, and this was at midnight last night, right? Yes, we're still up at midnight, still doing things, still switching up campaigns, and writing adver advertising campaigns and everything, right? We're still doing this. We want to remain relevant, uh, because if we are not relevant, we will be irrelevant. So, hence the reason I'm learning more about e-commerce now as well, because I want to remain relevant. I do not teach e-commerce. I do not do, I have done a lot of e-commerce sales. We've done e-commerce sales through our business, but nothing that's worthwhile going, okay, I've mastered it to be able to teach to people because I won't ever, I won't ever teach something and I'll refuse to teach something if I haven't mastered it myself first, right? So now to remain relevant, what are we doing? We're going to learn e-commerce. We're going to learn to sell e-commerce products, right? Digital e-commerce products. That's what we're going to learn to sell a lot more of right now, right? We're going to go a lot more in depth into all this sort of stuff. So all this non-touch points type selling, right? Because I understand a lot of the trends and how it all works and I can sell via email and all that type of stuff and the sell via uh, SMS and sell via messenger and all this type of stuff. I can do all that sort of stuff and I teach all of that. All right, within our 300 mastermind, our Freedom Warrior clients, all this type of stuff, we do it, we teach it. We learn how to do it, we master it, we teach it, right? However, when it comes to large volumes of e-commerce sales, right, that's why I want to learn e-com right now because I want to remain relevant. I want to learn more about it. I don't know everything about it. Yes, I've helped clients uh, with big budgets to be able to sell e-com products, right? But not like these little $20, $30 $50 products, $10 products online, right? We sell, you know, the $1,000, $1,500, $2,000, $100,000 products. That's what we help people sell, right? Because that's what we've mastered, the art of being able to sell and market and sell those types of products. And it's all about remaining relevant. So buying online courses, buying, uh, watching, reading blogs, reading books, all that type of stuff, right? New books over here. I don't know whether you can see them, but like new books, right? New books, new things that we're, we're learning, new things that we're reading, new things we're, we're doing to understand, to stay on top, stay relevant at all times, right? Um, so that's number two, reading books, magazines, uh, re like going through online courses, all this sort of stuff. That's number two. Number three, track your competitors, right? Um, like if there's people that have bigger budgets in marketing than you, that means they've got a lot more testing that they'll do. Well, one would hope that they would do a lot more testing than you. Um, because, and, and you, when you look at a lot of content and everything from a lot of your competitors and you track a lot of your competitors, right? Um, if you see someone who's got, you know, hundreds of thousands of views on certain videos, right? Or hundreds of millions of views on certain videos and things like that. Like this right here is a, an understanding of relevance. Yes, they might have spent a lot of money on marketing and all that type of stuff behind it, right? And it's hard to tell, was it a paid marketing campaign or was it an organic marketing campaign? A very large percentage of the time it is paid marketing, right? It is paid marketing that they've put behind all of this and joint venture marketing and all this type of stuff. Hey Donna, it's been too long. Where have you been? We haven't heard from you in a long time. <laughs> Hope you're doing amazingly. So, uh, you really got to make sure that you're staying relevant in marketplaces, right? And you got to be really, you do, you have got to be tracking your competitors. A lot of people are just keeping themselves in the dark um, and, they're, and they're not tracking things at all. I share what I do with my competitors, right? And I don't even look at it as competition. Yes, we probably overlap in a certain way. However, I don't even look at them as my competition. I speak with my competition very, very regularly. And, uh, or what would be classed as competition, yet I don't think of it as competition because some people will like them more than me, and that's okay. 
Some people will like me more than them, and that's okay, right? Uh, but I do. I keep my finger on the pulse with our competition. Or well, I'm using competition as a word because that's what everybody thinks of it as, and I don't think of it as competition at all, right? The only competition is me and what I was yesterday and what we were last month. How can we beat that? How can we do better? How can we grow, right? This is all I think about. I do not think about the coronavirus and what's going on with the coronavirus and how many new freaking um, cases per day. And I get people send me messages on Instagram. I get people send me messages on Facebook. Oh my God, how's the things in Australia? I've got no freaking idea. I don't really care what, what's going on in the rest of the world around me because I cannot control that. I work on what I can control, which is my own actions and what we do every single day to be able to create growth. Right, And it's always about progression over perfection. I spoke about this yesterday. Too many people are trying to perfect things and they're not progressing. It's about progression over perfection. And this was number three, right? Tracking your competitors, understanding what they do, right? Understanding how they do things. And hey, why not check in with your competitors? Become best buddies with your, with your competitors. Start sharing uh, information with each other, right? to be able to remain relevant, to be able to expand business. There's more than enough customers out there. There's more than enough clients out there to serve all of you, right? Because in every industry, there is people that are doing nothing. It's a hobby business and they're struggling. And then there's the other people that are thriving and there's very small amounts that are thriving to a huge level, right? I mean, like take us for example. Digital marketing, sales training, um, done for you marketing, uh, like uh, training sales teams, all this sort of stuff. There's so many people in the world that are doing that. There's people that are doing people that are doing hundreds of millions and millions a year. There's people that are doing hundreds of thousands. There's people that are doing tens to thousands. There's people that are doing hundreds, right? The hundreds are the people different, a complete different mindset. So the people that are doing hundreds of thousands of millions and tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in this particular industry, right? However, everybody has got their own marketplace. Everybody has their own place. Everyone is going through their own stages of growth and everything too, which is all the growth here. This is where all the growth comes from right here. So speaking with your competitors, tracking your competitors, um, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, remaining relevant because if you're not relevant you are completely irrelevant and hence the reason why you can't create any in real intrinsic value in a marketplace and I talk about intrinsic value because it's the intrinsic value that creates that wonderful thing of those green notes that go into your bank account right which you know really is once again a bit of a game at the moment because you don't physically seem to draw it out very often these days it just goes into the bank it goes out of the bank and then more comes into the bank and then more goes out of the bank and it seems to be, right? And this is the thing with social media advertising. The more you put in, the more continues to come back and comes back into your pocket. And I'm noticing so many trends with it all. It's turning into such a game for me right now. And Serena and I we were talking about this at midnight last night. Their first conversation was at 7, 8 o'clock last night, somewhere around that. And then... After that, we're talking about all of this at midnight as well, right? Like we're up at freaking midnight talking about all of this shit, right? And some of you are going, holy crap, you guys are up at that time? I mean, Serena at age 61, 62, would run rings. Sorry if I've got your, your age wrong, Serena. But I'm telling you, she would run rings around people my age or younger. She's got so much more energy than these people, right? People my age, right? I'm 32, half of Serena's age. Yeah, uh, I'm waiting for her to like bite back at me now. Um, half of her age, and she's got more energy than people that are half her age, right? <laughs> it's crazy. 62, going on 30. Exactly, that's what it must be. Going on 30. Because like a lot of people my age... They're just literally just going through the motions, right? And when you go through the motions, that's when you're not relevant. You're not relevant at all. You don't create any real intrinsic value in a marketplace. 
And that's what it's about. It's about creating intrinsic value. The only way to create intrinsic value is to create, re to, to maintain relevance. Because if you're not relevant, you're irrelevant, right? If you're not relevant, you are irrelevant. So you must be tracking your competitors. Be friends with your competitors. It is okay. You can have friendly competition, right? If you look at like a lot of the uh, biggest runners in the world, they are friends. Some of the most, the fastest runners and athletes in the world, they're all friends. They check in regularly. They speak about training and what they're doing and all this type of stuff. They don't hide it, right? They, they all understand that they work hard to be able to get to where they want to go, right? Things, some people seem to think, are manifested. And you just have something all of a sudden just drop into your lap and you get a deal, you know? It just doesn't happen like that. It happens through work. It happens through your ability to be able to create an intrinsic value, to create some real intrinsic value in a marketplace so you can start having real conversations and you can start also remaining relevant in it. So that's number four. Number four is tracking your competitors. Number five is uh, following industry leaders, right? So I said about tracking your competitors and keeping in touch with your competitors. Now follow industry leaders, right? Because industry leaders have a tendency to start a lot of the trends, okay? So take us for example, right? So when it comes to our business, our business, the talk is copywriting, the talk is sales funnels, which is a big fad. The talk is um, building systems and automations and growing business and scale is a one of those words that people use a lot and I use that word a lot as well. Then there's the, the Facebook marketing is a trend, Instagram marketing a trend is a trend, Instagram hacking is a trend. All these things are trends and ways to be able to remain relevant. We know our marketplace down to like an absolute T, right? So uh, you've got to be following these industry leaders, these people that are talking about all of this sort of stuff too, because you can actually shortcut your success as well in terms of remaining relevant by keeping in touch and following these types of industry leaders, right? So if you notice, right, like I, I look at, because I track my competitors, and I keep in touch with my competitors regularly as well. I also talk to them about like what their challenges are, what what are the what are the challenges they're having at the moment, right? And I speak to people that are doing 10, 20 grand a month in marketing, right? They're investing into the, into their marketing, and I'm going, what are the challenges at the moment? You know, they're like, oh, we're we're scale mode at the moment, but you know, like the challenge is, you know, we've got all these systems set up, it does this and that. I'm talking high level automations with people now, right? That's what I talk with my competitors around high level automations and, you know, workflows. And, you know, if this person doesn't open this email, send them another one and say, hey, I noticed you didn't open it. And if someone does open it, send them another one and say, hey, I noticed you were interested in this. You watched out, saw our last email, etc." So it's like I'm talking high level automations with competitors, right? right, with my competitors, that a lot of people go, oh, there's no way I'm going to speak to my competitors, right, they're my competition, right, small thinking, it's very small thinking, too many people think small, and they don't think big, they don't think strategically, and you can speed up your learning process by doing this, by keeping in touch with the competitors and seeing what's working, right, so follow industry leaders, so when I say I follow the competi my competition, or so-called competition, when I go to look for industry leaders and follow industry leaders, I go, hey, is my competition following them? That way I know, hey, this person's an industry leader, hey, this person's, you know, our competition's following them, therefore, you know, my co like if my competition's following them, what I can do is I can go, because I'm speaking to my competitors and going, okay, what's the challenges you're having right now? Because, hey, we do sales training, we do... Uh, digital marketing and stuff like that. A lot of them just do digital marketing and the sales trainers just do sales, right? And because I speak to the competitors, right, we've got the two different avenues we go down. And then when I go to industry leaders, which are interest-based targeting options on Facebook, I can then go, okay, cool, write all of my ad copy around specifically what are the challenges my competitors are having right now. And I can find more people just like these people 
uh, as well just by using these interest uh, interest based targeting options right so this is why it's so why it's so amazing to be able to just do this very simple simple process when it comes to uh, being able to stay relevant in a marketplace because these things that I'm speaking to you about right now they are the gateway to be able to experience your business's growth to really start creating an intrinsic value and if you look at the words right that I'm using intrinsic value intrinsic value intrinsic value it's it's a very uh, 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 it's a word that has a lot of meaning right and and it's really important that you create intrinsic value as opposed to creating just value because if you look at intrinsic as a word right intrinsic it's belonging naturally and it's essential success is the art of intrinsic like uh, to a high quality of life intrinsic is intrinsic is, ve is is incredibly relevant that particular word incredible relevance of belonging and it's natural so if you are natural and you are belonging in a particular marketplace and creating intrinsic value in a marketplace, you're going to have so many people coming at you for business, like wanting to do business with you that you will not be able to keep up and you'll have a lineup of people all wanting to do business with you, which is what we've got right now. We've got this lineup of people wanting to do business. Some we've had to put off for a month and we've said, okay, we can do business with you next month, right? Because, you know, we've got already this 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 and this we had some people go to us hey uh, i want to work with you in two weeks time they've come back to us to sort of get started with things and in that time we've had well over a dozen odd you know clients go straight in in front of them right in that very short period of time for our scale partner program and you know uh, then they've been pushed back another month right um, and they can't work for another month, right? So, and this is what you can create within your business when you create real intrinsic value. Real intrinsic value is where it's all at. I'm going to be taking questions for you guys now as well. So, like and share the stream. Uh, I want you guys to ask your questions right now. What questions do you guys have? How can I serve you? What do you guys want to know about these subjects? What do you want to know about creating intrinsic value for your business? Um, what do you want to? What are you doing? More importantly, to to remain relevant. What are you doing to remain relevant right now? What is the the factors and the facets that you're doing within your business at the moment to remain relevant to people, so that you're starting to create that lineup of people that want to do business with you, as opposed to anybody else? Okay. Because this is all about you guys. This is about you guys. This is about helping you guys grow. It's about me. If I can just say one thing on my live streams that makes a difference to you guys, it helps you move forward. That's that's exactly why we're doing it. And that's exactly why you know I'm here on a Saturday, live, teaching, showing. Uh, and I'm, I'm teaching things that we're doing right now. I'm not teaching things that we're thinking of doing or we've thought about doing or we tried in the past that didn't work, or anything like that. We're talking about the things that we do right now, the things that we do every single day to be able to remain relevant. Because that's what it's about, remaining relevant. If you're not relevant, you're completely irrelevant. And if you guys have some questions, you just comment them below, and hey, guess what? We will answer them for you guys, and for you guys only. Nobody else on the internet, just you guys. <laughs> and if you're just watching the replay of this too, uh, you can... Feel free to still comment below and I will be back to you with the answers, okay? Or with the answers, man. I'll be back to you with all the answers, if you know what I mean. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> all right. Awesome, guys. So I'm going to wrap this one up for you guys today. And we're going to call it a day. we got some work to do. It's Saturday. And we're going to continue working. going to continue driving results for you guys. Uh, one of our clients just did se uh, over 17 leads in the last 24 hours. So when you ask about you know 37 to 59 leads in 28 days or less, uh, we have some people almost do it in a day. 
you guys can be the exact same. All it's going to come down to is your ability to be able to take action. That's it. Everything is possible. Uh, remember this one thing though, walking away, there's only one thing that I want you to remember from all of our live streams, and that one thing is, if you do not fight for your own freedom, absolutely nobody else will. So every single day, you must get out there. Every single day, you must take action. Every single day, you must make it happen. And remember, to implement what we talk about, like, don't just be a gunner, like I'm gonna implement it. Be a doer. Actually do it. And for you, Indran, as well, uh, why did you get started in business in my business? Why did I get started in my business? I'll share it on the next live stream. Uh, remember to be the warrior, guys, and I'll speak to you all really soon. Peace out.